Hello brothers and sisters, today is February the 20th. I had to restart this video because I was so excited that I was talking so fast. I was like, oh my goodness, let me start over. Last night was amazing. Last night, I I think I had two guardian, two archangels, not guard, archangels next to me, guarding me the whole night. And I kept on going through all of these different heavenly scenes. I was in heaven. I was in, you know, it was strange because it was... The, the heavens I went to, they looked different, each one, and they, each one had different characteristics and different abilities in them, and there's so much I could tell you guys, but I'm going to have to break a lot of this stuff down in multiple videos. Um, this video right here is actually not about that. This is about something that the Lord wants me to tell everybody. This is probably one of the few times you'll ever hear me say, uh, thus saith the Lord, but it's a very powerful and extremely important message the Lord has told me to tell you, so I will. Now... You know, you guys make up Israel. Those who are born again, give their life to Christ, they are Israel. Spiritual Israel, and you are also physical because you get grafted in, brothers and sisters. And those who call themselves Jews but are not in an, and are the synagogue of Satan, they get taken off. You know, their branches get broken off the tree. They are burned in the fire. Now, the dream I will share with you on this particular video, and I'll kind of go and... and allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and if he wants me to share anything else in this particular video I will but what I will share with you today I was in this dream and guys the Lord has been wow I mean I can't say this enough these dreams were so revealing like never before like a whole different level of revelation and mysteries being given to us now I'm flying in the air I'm with family all out in the back of like a yard I'm flying out in the air and I'm so excited that I have all these abilities now and I'm flying all around and there is one ability that I have that I'm kind of like really shocked about. I'm like, wow, wow, how can I do this? I'm taking my hands, brothers and sisters, and I'm throwing fire out of my hands. Now, it didn't come out. It come out as like a, a oily liquid from my hands, but as it like poof hit the ground or whatever object I would aim at, it would light on fire as soon as it hit. So I was basically throwing fire and oil from my hands. Now, I'm up in the air, and I'm showing my family, wow, you know, I can, wow, look at this. And I'm boom, boom, I'm throwing fire out of my hands at the ground. Now, one of my cousins who was there, um, he was like, well, I can fly. And so he gets up, and he flies up in the air. But he was more of a levitation. And it reminded me of, you know, Moses when he threw a staff down, and the um, snake comes out. And then the, the, the priests of Pharaoh, they go, and they throw their staffs down, and three, you know, snakes get eaten by God's snake, right? So they were like these false miracles, um, but you know, God of course overcame. So I found that this was kind of like that. It was like, well, I can fly too, but he was kind of, he couldn't really fly around. He kind of levitated off the ground just to show the other people that he had this ability too, but he really didn't. He was kind of just levitating there. And so we're all out there, brothers and sisters, and I'm all showing them this ability and I'm preaching the gospel to them like never before. My brother, uh, Charles was there and you know, a lot of times Charles was Christ, so he probably was Christ in this dream, and I was sitting there preaching to him, not realizing, but because my, my little brother in real life, you know, uh, needs to find the gospel. So I'm always trying to talk to him about it, and and so he probably got a kick out of that because I was preaching the gospel to Jesus. So <laughs> I mean, so I find that kind of funny. But the next scene I go into is kind of pretty much the same thing. I go into the house, and a lot of my family is there. My br blood relatives on this earth were all kind of gathered together in the house. And I'm, you know, at the stove, I'm throwing this liquid, this fire from my hands. And I'm like, wow, like, how can I do this? You know, I'm just kind of amazed, you know, playing around with the ability to throw fire from my hands. And as it would, you know, hit the stove or hit whatever I wanted to hit, like I said, it came out like an oil, like a dark oil. And then when it hit, it would turn into like a, a poof of fire and torch whatever I was aiming at. And so I was preaching to all of them. I started preaching the gospel to them. Um, you know, there was one point where I wanted to go, I was flying up and I was flying through the air and I wanted my cousin, my cousins, I wanted all of them to join me, fly with me. And they, we were flying through this building. It was like a huge library. But I thought to myself, I can't invite them. If I invite them, they will steal. They will steal from this library. So I think that as the Lord is saying, he would love to invite all of his people, you know, all of the children of the earth to go with him to heaven. But he can't allow sin in the heaven, brothers and sisters. He just can't do it. Um, 
I'll pause here for a second and tell you this because so many people are being deceived online and it breaks my heart. I was led into a conversation a couple of days ago to where a young sister, I won't say her name, living with her boyfriend, living in adultery, um, claiming to have dreams that she's getting raptured and she's so excited about it while she's saying the F word and, and claiming that she's being taken up in the rapture, which I'm no one to judge, brothers and sisters, but we cannot use... Um, you know, you know how it's always funny how the enemy tries to use scripture against those who preach the scriptures. And so, I like to read to you a scripture that's extremely important, brothers and sisters. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, through 11, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, um, nor adulterers, nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind that means homosexuals for those of you who are claiming to be Christian but are homosexual turn from this you will not enter the kingdom of God living in homosexuality now next it says in 10 it says nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God and such were some of you but ye are washed be ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God brothers and sisters be not deceived for you will not enter the kingdom of God living in fornication living in adultery and the Lord says if you look upon a woman to um, to lust after her you commit adultery in your heart and yes there's repentance and you know there's turning to Christ but you will not be taken in your sin repent now the next scene was the most telling and most powerful scene I think I've ever been through. And it, you know, what I was doing was scaring me, you know, a little bit. I get taken, well, first of all, before I get taken to the next scene, um, I was shown a bunch of different chemicals. And one of the chemicals was hot sauce, something else. And I was shown like a chemical makeup, like really deep into it. I can't remember it when I wake up, you know, but it was like NA square or something. Like that's not what it was. It was like I was shown chemical makeups in these different, these items. And I was shown that the oil substance coming from my hands had that certain chemical that was in the hot sauce and this and that and that in the oily acidic substance coming from my hands that would cause fire to shoot. Now, I go... And I get taken to a bus scene, the rapture bus, brothers and sisters. And there is a young man that is standing outside the bus at first, and he's kind of goofing off with everybody. And and then he gets into the bus, and the rapture bus is going to take off. And we all know that's where we are right now. The rapture, the the uh, the, the catching away is about to take place, and so many are deceived. It's about to take place. And so I believe this young man's name was Jacob. Now, when I thought of his name, and I believe his name was Jacob, Jacob, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Now, I just told all of you that you are Israel. All those who choose God are Israel. And some of those who are Israel are sitting on the, you know, the fence post, waiting, um, kind of just not surrendering themselves. You know, they're lukewarm. Brothers and sisters, turn from um, being lukewarm because God will spew you out of his mouth and I don't want that for any of you because I, I sincerely love you and only want the best for you so now we're up on this bus and I'm kind of in the back of the bus kind of like I saw in a really early dream I had where I was on the back of the bus kind of watching everybody and so I was on the back of the bus and I noticed that this young man was sitting standing up in the aisle completely goofing off and I stand up, brothers and sisters, and the Lord has me deliver a stern message to him. You know, really stern. I, I stand up, and with the fire from my hands, I throw each a hand at him, but I didn't hit him. I didn't want to hit him. What I did is I made the fire go, boo, like, like about a two feet, a foot in front of his body, to where like a warning. It was a warning shot. After I throw the fire from my hands, I start to walk towards him. I can see he's scared, and I say, if you're not going to serve God, get off the bus. I continue to walk forward towards him and I say it again. Serve God or get off the bus. These are the words of the Lord. I see him sit down and at this point, once I got the message out to him, I felt kind of sorry for him because he sat down and he looked really scared and I could see his eyes. He was looking out the bus like, should I stay or should I go? And then my heart kind of, I, you know, I loved, I loved him and I felt for him and I said, and I said, look, 
I said, do you, do you deserve, do you want to serve God? Do you desire to serve God? If you desire to serve God, I will go back and sit down and you won't see me again. Like I'll go sit down and leave you, leave you be. I said, but I have to know if you are willing to serve God. And he said, yes, I am. And so as he said that, I went and sat back down. So brothers and sisters, are these not the words of the Lord? The rapture, the, sec, the, the catching away is upon us. And so many people are sitting, you know, sitting there, not serving God. And God is telling you, you know, God is telling you, serve me, serve me or be left behind. Serve me or you will not enter the ark of safety. Serve me or you will remain on the earth while I rain down fire from heaven to destroy you. I also, brothers and sisters, believe this is a direct message that the two witnesses, um, whoever they may be, whatever they may represent, are about to say, take center stage. And that boy, who I believe his name was Jacob, representing Israel, you know, this is a sign that the catching away is about to take place and that the two witnesses are ready to fulfill their mission. If you have your scriptures and you want to turn to them, you can turn to Revelations 11 and we read, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy two thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues of nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they shall, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelleth upon the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And that same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were aff affrightened, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe was past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Dear brothers and sisters, get your house in order. And those of you who have been waiting to come out of the gray area and to choose a side, I tell you this day to choose the Lord. This day I say unto you to serve God. If you want to be on the ark, just as in the days of Noah, you know, the rains came and wiped everything away, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you now that those rains are coming again, not a literal rain, but metaphorical. We are being taken off of this earth and you will remain here to go through the great tribulation, a time like never before. And brothers and sisters, I also testify to you that it is time. We are in the season for the two witnesses to start their, um, their mission upon the earth. And I say unto you, get ready again. Um, prepare yourselves, repent of your sins, get baptized for the remission of sins, brothers and sisters, by submersion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Stop relying upon the doctrines of men and turn to the scriptures and also turn to God for his Holy Spirit speaks to you in a still, small voice. He doesn't yell at you. He doesn't hit you with a bat. He speaks to you gently and softly and wants you to fine tune your relationship with him so you can hear that small voice. So in the words of the Lord, brothers and sisters, serve God or get off the bus. Serve God or be left behind. 
These are the words of the Lord, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Repentance because you understand that you are a sinner, a wretched one in both nature and deed, and that you deserve that which a holy and righteous God must give to those who sin, and that is his wrath and eternal punishment. That's repentance. Repentance is recognizing that. Repentance is self-abhorrency, as the confession says. Repentance is being so sick of yourself that you can't stand yourself, and you want to get away from yourself because you recognize that everything in you is filthy and wretched and does not deserve to be in the presence of a holy God. And you turn from that and cry out to the only one who can make you any different. That's repentance. Repentance and faith. Faith in what? Faith in the Jesus of the Scriptures. Faith in the God-man. Faith in the one who was born of a virgin. Faith in the one who performed miracles. Faith in the one who died on a cross. Faith in the one who rose again on the third day. Faith in the one who's coming again to judge the living and the dead. Faith in the only one who's an answer to the sin problem from which you are in repentance. Faith in that one. Faith in him alone. In his completed work. Not his work and, but his work alone. That's faith. That's faith, not just the name, but the person and work of Jesus Christ. When you grasp repentance like that, and when you grasp faith like that, then you understand the narrow road, the narrow gate, the hard road. Only then. If you think it's easy, and that you can continue to be who you are, and that somehow because you say a few words that makes you okay with God? If you think that because you are comparatively less wicked than the people around you and that somehow that means you're worthy of heaven, if you think that because somehow you have not been as awful and as wicked as the Hitlers of the world and the Mansons of the world and that somehow that means that God's going to grade on a curve, then you have not found the narrow gate. Repent. Place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Cry out to Him that He might save you and forgive you of your sins. Enter the narrow gate. Walk the hard road. The one with few companions. Because then and only then will you find life. You've come in the final day. Oh, when God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years, you understand about it. You are a marked generation. 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 Earth at this particular time was for God the has saved for the final inning an army that you have in this. You must be prepared to meet your God. Oh, youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. An army. There are things for each of you to do. As well as your special world. You, you, you. Me?